Thomas on the Zoom. Preparing. So we already have Mbak Julia Surya Kusuma also joining us. Thank you so much, Mbak Julia, for coming. <laughs> I will invite you in the forum later. Okay, we already on YouTube right now. We can start. Uh, okay, let's start it. Uh, thank you so much. First of all, welcome everybody to uh, talk social forum. Very special uh, today. Not only because we 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 use it is uh, English edition, but also. We, we have uh, three very, very important guests today. Uh, today uh, or tonight in Indonesia or this morning in uh, DC, we're going to have discussion uh, on masculinities, feminism, and the uh, post 9-11 global politics. This is the series 28 from the uh, Let's Talk Serial Forum. So we, we since last year, we already have done like 27 and now the 28th set, the series eight. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, express my, uh, uh, on behalf of uh, Let's Talk to our speakers. Uh, now we already have two, uh, Nur Hashim and uh, Laksman Bilbase. Later, uh, Dr. Ruhaini Zuhayatin will be joining us a little bit late because uh, she's on mission maybe about 20 or 30 minutes later. We can start now. Uh, I would like also to uh, express my gratitude and thanks to the Juru Bahasa Isyarat or the uh, interpreters, uh, Kaka and Mine. Thank you so much for uh, your voluntary contribution in this forum. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, uh, I also want to uh, thanks all the uh, audience here. Uh, I know this is the English, but uh, uh, hopefully uh, many more people will be joining us. Uh, we already have like 14 right now, but it doesn't matter, you know, like maybe people following us from, from YouTube. Once again, uh, thank you so much for all the audience, uh, for the participants uh, uh, for coming to all. Okay, uh, before uh, uh, we go deeper, you know, like uh, I would like to a uh, little bit give some uh, introduction. Uh, first, uh, maybe some of you or people out there wondering why we use English today or uh, in uh, tonight forum. Uh, not only be, you know, it is not like uh, we don't mean it, but because, you know, uh, we bring a very important the so global topic. Uh, first, uh, uh, because of that, you know, we, we're going to try to reach uh, as much as, you know, people to uh, the audience to this uh, forum. Once again, it's not only who likely uh, attend this forum, but also people who later, you know, like uh, following us from YouTube or later uh, listening the discussion from the recorded uh, YouTube, uh, things like that. So we we really want that this uh, topic on, you know, you know the, the global topic uh, related to gender masculinity can have a bigger audience over there, like internationally. Secondly, because we also invite very important uh, speakers, uh, resource person right now, uh, my uh, uh, colleague, uh, Laksman Bilbasi, uh, he was, uh, he is a, he is a Nepalist, but he is uh, based in uh, Washington DC in the United States uh, and he cannot speak English. So once again, uh, uh, you know, uh, we use English not because uh, we want it, but you know, like for that reason, 
have the speaker of uh, United States. We also want that this global topic can have larger audience over there, you know, people who speak English. But uh, for those who, uh, uh, you know, like the, the Dupable Dev, we provide with the uh, interpreters here. So letters will be translated into Bahasa Indonesia so they can they can uh, follow this discussion uh, if they really are here. Okay, uh, and then uh, I think I, I I try to give a little bit context why we bring this uh, you know, topic on masculinities, feminisms, and uh, post-9-11 uh, global politics. Uh, we know that like not long ago, uh, Taliban uh, in Afghanistan took over again the power there, and that's become the international news. Like really, uh, you know, present us with the you know new new discussion topic, new topic on discussing the global politics because we remember again how before, uh, uh, like ten years ago, when Taliban was in the position. Uh, they use the issue like gender, women's rights, and feminism to, you know, to, uh, to declare their their power. There, not only nationally in Afghanistan, but also internationally. And like not long ago, we see the situation again when Taliban took over uh, the power uh, in, uh, second time in Afghanistan. And we remember again uh, how. The issue of gender, women's rights, and uh, feminism become the center in this power. Uh, uh, and also, not long ago, like a month ago, we just celebrated 20 years of the 9/11 act. You know, uh, it happened like 2001, September 9/1, and uh, we we maybe. That day, in Tuesday morning, nobody imagined the implication or the impact of this attack, you know, to uh, the global politics until now. Not just the trauma, but also the political relation between different political groups in the world, and especially because it involved uh, the Muslim community. So the realization, relationship between, you know, the, the West, especially the United States with the uh, the Muslim uh, community also really changed a lot after the uh, September 11 attack. So now we just maybe pe maybe people who really uh, follow the situation after 9/11 uh, really can see and understand the implication of this 9/11 attack. You know, uh, like uh, as I said, not only in the relationship but also. Uh, you know, sometimes it's create new problem with uh, is like the the war against terrorism, the war against uh, Islamic fundamentalism, uh, and also uh, we also we also uh, knew about the uh, issue like the anti-immigration in some Western countries, United States, in France, uh, even in uh, you know England or in United Kingdom, things like that. So. All of this, if we see deeper in the situation or the, the, the situation after 9-11, we can see uh, the, the, the role 9-11 play in creating that political situation. And interestingly, well, uh, a lot of scholars uh, from anthropology, sociology, also political scientists already done a lot of studies about how gender, sexuality, women's rights become the center of the contestation, become the center of the uh, conflict uh, in the post-9-11 uh, global politics. Like, for example, uh, we see very clearly, like, the, the uh, I wrote this also in, um, you know, in Indonesian, Indonesian newspaper, uh, Media Indonesia, about how the media and the political leader in the United States uh, created a rhetoric about saving uh, women in Afghanistan from, you know, from Islamic patriarchy, Islamic fundamentalism, for example, to legitimize the attack or the invasion against uh, Afghanistan. Uh, 
uh, and we also uh, create uh, you know a rhetoric about uh, people with beard for example you know it's very popular people with beard with turban as you know the as uh, not only as, a, as as the representation of a new uh, new threat or new challenge for uh, uh, you know country like the united states and all of things like that refer to specific uh, group like the Muslim, but unfortunately, it also give gave, uh, gave impact to another group similar with similar identity like the Sikh group. You know, they the the uh, Sikh men wear uh, turban, example, because a lot of people in United States are, and I, as I said, like like for example, uh, they don't really know about you know the Muslim identity. They think that all people, all men wearing Turban are Muslim, so they also attack the the Sikh people. They also attack people, uh, women, Muslim women, you know, with wearing hijab. Then hijab become the center of the contestation. On the other hand, because of that campaign, because of because of the politics, so many Muslim groups or Muslim community try to uh, develop, you know, like new orientation of, you know, the idea of gender equality, women's rights, and feminism or the sort of Islamic feminism. They think that we don't want uh, uh, the idea from the West anymore to build or to campaign for our gender equality or women's rights because we, uh, the Muslim countries, already have our own tradition. Uh, uh, we reject the idea like feminism, uh, liberalism, secularism, all of things like that from the West is not really relevant and, uh, and even dangerous for uh, the idea of gender equality, women's rights, uh, uh, like that in the Muslim countries. We rather propose our own Islamic tradition to create, uh, you know, like gender equal community, gender equal Muslim community. Like that. Uh, so once again, we see how 9-11 become, uh, give a lot of implication and impact to our and we can see that you know the the issue of masculinity, gender, feminism, women's rights, and in the bigger context, human rights, democracy, and liberalism become uh, you know uh, presented in the center of the contestation. So I think that's that's uh, mostly the the direction I would like to uh, propose to our talk show today. Uh, once again. Uh, thank you so much to our uh, speakers, Mas uh, Nur Hashim, and uh, we 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 are waiting for uh, Dr. Ruhani Zahayatin. This is talk show. Uh, we really mean it as a talk show or an interactive discussion. So we invite everybody to you know use the chat room to or even in the middle of conversation between me and the speakers. You you can raise your hand if you have some idea to talk. You know to express. Uh, please feel free. You know, we really mean it as an interactive uh, discussion forum. Uh, uh, each speaker also can respond to uh, other speakers. Uh, uh, same, you know, like the audience also can respond to the conversation we, we are having right now. You know, like if, if you have any idea, want to express it, just raise your hand. Uh, I will give you the uh, table to you or the mic for you. So that's the, uh, so feel free, uh, uh, you have the audience have the, you know, have the same uh, opportunity, have the same chance to express your idea to him. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, before we, we start the conversation, I would like to introduce uh, uh, my guests today, uh, Laksan and uh, Hashim. From Ruhani Zuhayatin later, who is going to join us later uh, to you all. Uh, first, uh, I would like to introduce Laxman first. Laxman Belbasi, Belbase, MSc. Uh, he is a Nepalese, but he is now uh, uh, based in Washington, D.C. He is the co director of the uh, uh, Global Solidarity of Men Engage Alliance. This is a, a very important like coalition amongst uh, different groups across country uh, to uh, engage men and boys 
uh, to the issue of gender equality. So, but again, later we can discuss when, when we talk about engaging men and boys, so where is the position of women, for example, in that uh, movement toward gender equality. We're also going to ask about, when we talk about masculinity, where are women over there, for example, like that. Uh, uh, Laxman uh, is an activist, you know, women's right uh, defender, gender equality de defender, uh, with experience more than 70 years, you know, uh, he is like an expert in, uh, uh, you know, planner of the program on gender, on gender equality and on uh, uh, children's rights. Uh, before joining uh, Global Men Engage, Laxman was with the uh, Save of the Children in uh, Nepal. And he had a very important contribution to integrate or to accommodate gender into a program of uh, uh, gender in, gen, uh, into uh, uh, children empowerment. So I think that's quite a uh, you know, uh, breakthrough, very important contribution because you know a lot of uh, international organizations, even UN, you know, uh, they think if they don't have focus on gender, they, they don't really want to include this of gender, feminism, and women's rights into their program. So if we have figure like Laxman who work on gender equality and then try to uh, introduce, uh, you know, the great gender into many programs, uh, not only gender program, there's very important uh, contribution. You know, not only to engendering the program, but also to engendering the that organization, you know, like changing the the mindset, changing the perspective, changing the politics uh, in the organization. Uh, last month is also a professional uh, lecturer in uh, masculinity in international affairs in uh, Elliott School of International Affairs in George Washington uh, University in DC. It's also, I think this, I don't know how, 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 how this uh, uh, progress and development, you know, create or happen. Uh, uh, now, like the masculinity studies even become more popular in the uh, academia. I think this, uh, and, and a good thing is, you know, when finally we have the uh, correlation between what we do in outside academia, and then we, uh, we discuss it, you know, we study it. Uh, uh, academic institution. I think that's also a very important uh, experience and that we can learn from him. Uh, what else I can uh, hear? Uh, Laxman is also a member of UN uh, Spotlight, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to end uh, violence against women. Uh, he is part, I think that's again, you know, like after the growing campaign on the importance of men involvement and men engagement in in the equality program, no, even the the UN Secretary General and UN Bigger Body can involve this program too. Uh, and also, uh, I think uh, Laxman is also part of the Global Women's Initiative in the same university in George Washington University. In, uh, 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 if you want to know more about Laxman, you can uh, contact me. I can give you uh, her, his Facebook. You know, uh, please communicate with him. You know, but you, you see from my short description, he's a very important figure in uh, you know uh, men engage. He is very important in uh, the program of engaging men and boys in uh, gender equality. Once again, thank you so much, Laxman, for joining us here, for being with us. Uh, second, we have uh, Mas Nur Hashim, also known as Boim, very popular in Indonesia as Boim. If you uh, say, uh, you know, mention Boim, everybody working on gender feminism in Indonesia, we should know uh, uh, Mas because he, like Laxman, Mas Boim also has very long experience in this program starting from uh, when he was uh, an undergrad, you know, he volunteering in uh, one of the oldest women's crisis center in Yogyakarta called Rivka Anissa, 
until finally must for lead or led the organization the uh, men's death uh, women's uh, in Rifka Anissa in Yogyakarta. Uh, so like maybe more than 20 years ago. Uh, uh, Mas Boim also very active in, you know, uh, engaging men and boys in gender equality. Uh, he is a co-founder of Women's Alliance or Aliansi Laki Laki Baru in Indonesia. Uh, you know, uh, this organization is the pioneer in uh, the so working with men and boys to end violence against women, to promote gender equality, uh, to uh, strengthen uh, feminist idea. Uh, it built like 2009, I guess, uh, if I don't, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, uh, those who want to know about the Human Alliance can contact me too. Uh, Mas Wain is also a member of the UN Secretary General of a men's leader to end uh, violence against women. So I think it's almost the same with uh, uh, Rachman that in that position. Maswaim is very a product is a very productive writer too. Uh, he writes in newspaper. He writes uh, books. He writes a journal article on uh, issue gender issue on gender equality, women's rights, and particularly on uh, masculinity. So. We in Indonesia really uh, owe a lot to uh, the academic contribution of uh, Mas Boim or, or Nur Hashim, uh, who active, actively you know, produce uh, this kind of uh, uh, academic work, you know, because it's very, still very rare, the reference in Bahasa Indonesia, in Indonesia about masculinity, about uh, engaging men and women, engaging men and boys in gender equality. So, we need more uh, figure like uh, Mas Boim. Uh, Mas Boim currently is a lecturer in sociology in uh, UIN or uh, State Islamic University of Palisongo in Semarang. Uh, um, yeah, it's like outside his hometown. So I think Mas Boim need to commute from Jogja to uh, Semarang, <laughs> I don't know, every day. <laughs> that's really tiring, but that's real man. <laughs> Mas Boim uh, has a BA in Islamic law from uh, State Islamic University uh, Sunan Kalijaga in Yogyakarta and an MA from uh, Wollongong University in Sydney, yeah, Mas, yeah. in Sydney, uh, Australia. Yeah. Uh, what else I can introduce? Mas Boim is uh, an expert trainer. Uh, and resource person on the issue of gender uh, equality, on feminism, and uh, particularly on the issue of community and engaging men and boys in, uh, uh, for gender equality programs. So once again, welcome to in. I really appreciate your uh, presence and participation here. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, even though uh, Dr. Ruhaini is not here yet, I would like to introduce you to to, uh, to you all, uh, Dr. Ruhaini Zuhayatin, uh, who will be joining us later. Professor, uh, doc, Professor Dr. Ruhaini, Siti Ruhaini Zuhayatin, uh, MA. Uh, uh, she is a professor or in Indonesia, Guru Besar in Gender and uh, Human Rights Studies. Uh, from uh, State Islamic University Sunan Kalijaga uh, in Yogyakarta. So uh, this is also, you know, represent her expertise in, in this area of need that more people earn a professorship in this area of study. Things, you know, this is also very important for the, you know, uh, the authority you know, to talk about that. Some people really see the the status of the figure before 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 they talk and we really glad that we have more figure uh, who earn professorship to besar in this specific area gender and human rights studies uh professor zuhayatin or dr ruhani zuhayatin is currently also an expert advisor or special advisor uh, on international religious affairs to the president of Republic Indonesia. Uh, her assignment, uh, among her assignment is to promote uh, Indonesian model of Islamic 
of tolerant Islam, you know, to the uh, global community. So we call it the uh, Islam Wasatia or moderate Islam, uh, non-violent Islam, uh, things like that. Uh, uh, finally, we work on that. You know, we have the model of how uh, Islam and being Muslim uh, uh, experience or live without uh, violence, and that's really matter for our. Uh, uh, current politics I and mean, Islam is not only live or experience, but but also uh, stereotype as you know the religion of violence. So with this very very specific position as a expert or expert advisor to the president to promote uh, non-violent or moderate Islam, uh, this will be very important role uh, for Dr. Rohani Zayatin. Uh, she, she has been a pioneer for uh, gender equality in the Muslim community in Indonesia, you know, a long time ago, especially through uh, the Muhammadiyah, one of the largest Islamic organization in Indonesia. Uh, she initiated a lot of gender program in that uh, organization. And even, you know, like to enter the organization as a woman is already difficult, but uh, Dr. Rohaini Zwayatin initiated all gender program on that, uh, you know, organization. Uh, even though this organization considered to be uh, a modern organization, but still, you know, to introduce or integrate or to promote gender equality and women's rights through that kind of organization is very challenging. But we're glad that we have a figure like Dr. Siti Rohaini Zwayatin. Uh, uh, Professor Zwayatin, uh, earned an MA in sociology or social theory from Melbourne University and uh, a doctoral degree from uh, Gajah Mada University in uh, Yogyakarta, U UGM, uh, Universitas Gajah Mada in Yogyakarta. So that's all the profiles of our three speakers. Uh, Maybe some uh, of the audience already very familiar with uh, uh, this year. Once again, if you know one, if you want to know uh, more about this uh, speaker and my guest, uh, uh, please feel free to uh, contact me. Anytime. Okay, let's start our conversation. Once again, this is an interactive discussion. So we would like to invite all the audience to, to uh, engage in this conversation. If you have any idea, uh, you can write or you can also uh, raise your hand uh, uh, to express your opinion, okay? Uh, let's start with the, uh, uh, the concept first uh, before we go deeper into the relationship between masculinity and uh, the politics. Let's start with the, with the concept. Maybe we can, we can ask uh, Axman if Masbo Im later uh, want to respond. Uh, Many people talk a lot, you know, it's become very popular concept too about uh, masculinity, you know, uh, what it is actually, you know, how we do understand masculinity. Uh, do you think uh, we can only uh, understand or conceptualize masculinity as a single concept or there are many different concepts about masculinity? So, uh, would you like to ask? Thank you. <clears throat> thank you for it. Uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation. It's a real pleasure to be together with uh, the distinguished speakers and you all who are listening or joining us today here in Zoom or, or YouTube. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us in this conversation. So I think, you know, to start with, I guess, you know, the I, I think most of us are aware on when we talk about gender norms, expectations, and categories that are uh, primarily created in the system where we live in as individuals are actually all about power distribution among the genders, and mostly in, in ways that are defined in very binary terms and understanding, uh, and one versus the other. So these issues then determine their also positions and hierarchy with respect to each other at you know, uh, interpersonal, relational, institutional, and political level. And we see the manifestations of 
these hierarchies uh, working out and interplaying in different spaces, including at family level, but also all the way to the international levels as well. So if this is to be understood and analyzed from you know, patriarchy as a system, uh, the system that privileges men over women or trans and gender non-conforming individuals, as well as masculine over feminine, then one can see the power dynamics and hierarchy creates the situation where these who are in the higher end of the power hierarchy will have power over and hence control over individuals, relations and political spheres and life. Those are supposedly to be on the lower end of the spectrum of power hierarchy. Uh, so it, it is then, you know, also exemplifies why when it comes to power um, uh, issue, uh, it's not a very binary, it's a spectrum that we look at. And hence, uh, it, it is important to understand patriarchy from that angle as well. Um, and then, you know, uh, we see this happening uh, internationally, where generally, you know, as Farid was saying earlier, that it creates a certain level of hierarchy within uh, individuals, but also institutions and states at an international level. And even at the a political level in, in, uh, in, a, in a certain uh, organizing, where who are located at a higher end of this power spectrum will become powerful and rule the rest. So the ruling on in itself becomes a power dynamics. And that's where then the issue of rulers and the ruling class and, uh, and power comes in more handy to really unpack then how does this issue of gender and power becomes relevant in the context of unpacking masculinities. So in short, masculinities refers to the social roles, behaviors, and expectations that have been set for men or those who are associated with men or male figures in a particular context and a particular time. Uh, these roles, behaviors, and expectations are socially produced but embodied in ways that then become the determining factors of what constitutes meaning to be a powerful man or meaning to be uh, what it means to be a man for that particular context and time. And this also not only relates to individual men, but also the patriarchal institutions that are in place in our own system. Maybe it religious systems, maybe it family as a system, maybe it as in state as a patriarchal highly masculine system or military in that sense, or even up to the level of human exploitation or an extraction of, from the planet. So it really cuts across our own lives in a very specific way, but also towards the exploitation of the planet where we are living. So the notions of power over uh, and, and domination and hierarchy leads or you know, cuts across all these systems that we look at uh, in our own lives. So, and this system actually, when we dig slightly deeper, uh, creates hierarchy, not only between men and women or in, in binary terms, but also creates hierarchy among men and among women, among trans people, among people who don't uh, conform to any gender identities. And that's a kind of uh, uh, works that caters to the interest of producing powerful people, especially men, and valorizes those men in such a way that they are located on the topmost layer of power in the pyramid within the gender power system. And I think that happens only because there is no particular one way of understanding why, how, what masculinity means. So it, it, is also, it also refers to the particular patterns of attributes and behaviors that are associated with the ideals about how men and boys should behave and their positions within the gender relations. So boys and men's attitudes are profoundly shaped by these rigid expectations, which are built onto this notion that men and boys are there to become dominant, be the power holder and so on. And that's what creates this expectation and then has a disproportionate cost for women and girls and people of gender diverse identities but also as themselves as men and boys. So with the power and privilege, it also has a certain level of cost, even though it has a higher level of cost when it comes to the experience of women and girls. 
And then in, in, in order to stand in relationships of superiority to feminine identity, masculinity must be represented as possessing characteristics that are binary opposite to feminine identity. And that if that's how we, are, we understand masculinity or masculinity is being created, so then that means there is, it keeps on, has to change from one location to the other, one time from the other, one institution and space from the other and and that notion and and, and the, the movement here and there when it comes to how men and boys should behave then there cannot be only one way to look at and understand masculinities and that's why within the masculinities discourse we use the term masculinities rather than masculinity to to cover these different attributes these different behaviors that men has or enactments in a way have to show in different spaces in order to prove that they are men or men enough makes it a complex uh, uh, a culmination of a system and then that's why it we generally use uh, in plural terms uh, when as masculinities so and again you know uh, whether we can only think about masculinities uh, among men or or and i think so, and defining what constitutes masculinity primarily is done in conjunction or, or as opposed to whatever is considered as feminine. So the idea is, as a masculine man or masculine person, what only thing you need to prevent from is showing off as feminine in the way that is understood in the context, in the structure you are in. So there is no concrete definition of what, what it means to be a masculine, what is masculinity is. So it is always done in conjunction and in contrasting to what is considered feminine in that space. So if so, then I think we cannot segregate and remove women from the picture when we try to understand and define masculinities. And also if masculinities we observe or understand it as a system that only creates and valorizes powerful men, then it becomes a small subset of even those men who are on the higher end of the power hierarchy within the patriarchal system. Uh, and then, you know, in the quest of achieving that level of uh, limelight or that level of power, men go through a certain process that starts from the early is, you know, the socialization, of girls and boys from the very early years, and, and they are uh, introduced into this system to become an act tough, act and dominant, become dominant and risk-taking and so on. Uh, and that's that also has to be understood from a um, very uh, spectrum perspective. Um, and then also to actually, the, then for you talked about feminism as an important pillar all these nuances and understanding of masculinities and how that impacts the lives of men and boys themselves did not come as a conscious among men. It was introduced by women or feminist leaders to men yeah. saying, hey, you men, you are gendered beings too and the rigid gender norms actually have negative implications on your own life. And they started calling out men to look into our own lives as men or those who identify as men and then unpack and understand the cost, the, 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 pay, the, the process that we also go through in order to achieve that unachievable ideals around masculinities. And that's where the feminism to me becomes important as a guiding picture on when we work on transforming masculinities and that work on with men and boys always have to be checked all the time with the feminist lens. And that means accepting feminist leaders, questioning and curiosity in the work we do on transforming masculinity. So it's not that men will just run with the idea and figure out what they need to do, because we have seen that process has actually led to putting again men into pedestal rather than dismantling the same system that we are in at first aiming to dismantle. So that relationship with the feminist movement and feminist leaders and the LGBTIQ leaders, which actually nullify 
this gender as a binary concept at, at, at its essence is becomes really important. So I'll stop there and maybe Noor wants to add there or you for it. Thank you so much, uh, Rasman, giving us uh, masculinity in a very uh, comprehensive uh, aspect, you know. Uh, so we, we, we not understand that when we talk about masculinity, it's not just uh, being men, you know, in a, it is being men, but uh, the spectrum, the aspect behind this being man is uh, very complicated. It's also related to the politics, you know, it's also related to, you know, specific context in that situation. And uh, also the, the, the ideology and also the, 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 the political process behind this being man too, you know. Uh, but one thing here that uh, 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 Laxman give us a very important key in, in the context of, of our discussion, related to uh, how masculinity uh, in the context of is, you know, uh, man already uh, mentioned a little bit there, you know. Uh, masculinity is not, this is about the uh, power here. Uh, how men deal with the power, how men manage the power relation with others. And it's not only about men with women, but also men with other uh, men, and then with other, the so-called gender who, uh, you know, in in uh, not binary uh, category are diverse, for example, like that. So we need to think about the wide spectrum when we talk about the masculinity. That's why we uh, have the foundational understanding why it is relevant to talk about masculinity in the context of, uh, of the politics. Uh, one of things, one of what this is related to the to the power, you know, and uh, you know, when uh, we, we talk about power, how we manage it, how we overcome with the, uh, uh, the power offer, as uh, uh, Laxman mentioned, a little bit in the uh, uh, presentation, like that. Uh, much for him, if you want to uh, add something, but maybe uh, uh, Laxman uh, gives some, you know, like. Uh, concept here, conceptual framework. Maybe Mas Boim can give us like a little bit example, you know, uh, both in the global politics or in the national uh, What masculinity are in social realm and have inside uh, what it is when we talk about the masculinity. Yeah, I think, uh, thank you Laxman for uh, clarifying the concept that help us to understand the masculinity concept as a concept that we discuss uh, uh, today. And um, uh, I'm quite interested in uh, commenting when uh, Laxman uh, explaining masculinity is also not only about how men perform, how men behave, how men uh, act, but also masculinity is about power. Yeah, I think uh, this is quite uh, interesting. And um, I would like to uh, discuss when uh, Farid uh, mentioning about the topic of uh, to this discussion, uh, seeing the issue of masculinity and feminism in in the context of uh, post 9/11 tra tragedy, I would say that 9/11 uh, tragedy is actually uh, an indicator that. Uh, our global order, it can be politic, it can be economic, is uh, uh, for me is shaped by uh, masculinity norms. Yeah. Uh, when I say uh, shaped by masculinity norms, uh, how our global order uh, The um, 
masculinity masculinity norm is uh, as a, as an as a standard as a norms yeah meaning that uh, the use of uh, the use the use of war the use of weapon the use as considered as normal in solve in solving the conflict yeah and uh, this is uh, uh, about uh, about uh, how men in the global order uh, solving the problem, uh, winning the competition. You know, uh, this is related to access and control of uh, resources. Yeah, and then uh, and. Resources is very important because uh, it will place a man what in a Luxman term within the uh, hierarchy of power and control by having the resources. And then um, uh, the places uh, that uh, people have, this is also related to uh, privilege that they will gain. And then the resources is very important to secure and uh, to maintain the, uh, uh, the status of their position within the hierarchy of power and control. So I think the 9-11 the tragedy is an indicator that our global order is shaped or maintained by masculinity norms. And then, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, uh, the, we can discuss further that the, the masculinity norm uh, that applied in our global order really uh, bring a negative impact. You know, there's so many people died and so forth, and so on, and so forth. So this is uh, what uh, Laxman mentioned about the cost that we have to pay by uh, adhering to certain kind of uh, notion of manhood. So I think this is uh, the, uh, well, the, the example of the, uh, how the power uh, play uh, in our relation and our political and our social relationship. So this is quite a tough topic, but I tried to comment when Farita uh, asking me about the example of the uh, the power when we we defining masculinity as power within our our uh, uh, life. And I think is when we go in the local context. Yeah. So. We, we will see that the same order is also applied. I mean, when we go to the local context, that our, our society is also set by masculinity norms, where the, the use of violence uh, is normalized as a mean of solving the problem in, in our society. So for instance, we, we always, uh, 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 read the news about the brawl between a uh, young uh, group in, in Jakarta or between youth organizations. This is, is also uh, related to how men compete each other, especially related to uh, 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 access to what resources. So I think this is uh, my comments uh, for it. Thank you, Mas Waim. I think you nailed it, you know, like when you give example directly to the event of 9-11 as uh, an example of how masculinity, that's why that masculinity used in, uh, you know, uh, political context with uh, its tremendous uh, cause, not just life, but as I said, traumatic post 9-11 life, you know, until now. Uh, and also with the creation of, you know, mindset that things like that is not possible, you know, like everywhere. Uh, but 
Uh, it raised my question too. We know that we have a concept called from uh, Rowan Cornell called hegemonic masculinity, like people idealize certain masculinity as uh, the most uh, imagined, you know, like the most ide ideal uh, of being a uh, masculine person, it's like that, like with violence, like uh, with, mus with muscular body, if that's man, and then leader who, you know, with strong and disciplining order, for example, things like that. But my question is, uh, you know, if we said that masculinity are cruel, you know, there, there are many forms of masculinity. Is that the only one, you know, the form of violence, the form of uh, dominating, the form of uh, oppression uh, of masculinity is that possible for uh, the global politics? I know there is a context of 9-11, you know, like giving us a uh, in, inspire us to do the same things, you know, like mas violence masculine as the only way to solve the problem. But do you think, uh, you know, if if you we look at around, you know, the example or in the real life of even in the just the concept, you know, is it possible to have non-violent, non-dominating, or non-hegemonic masculinity in, you know, in the political context, for example? Maybe last one first. Do you think? <laughs> yeah, no, this this concept uh, where I come from still it's it's uh, it's debatable on the whole uh, phrase hegemonic masculinity. How helpful is it, or is it not really helpful to really understand um, you know the the power and control uh, uh, gender power uh, system. But I, I think the, the importance here is that the hegemony as a term actually is derived from uh, the Gramsci's analysis of power relations um, way back. And, and that being used to understand what makes certain groups of people uh, enact in a certain way to gain power and how they can you know, remain in uh, at the level of control so yeah, Connell introduced this concept of hegemonic masculinity as something that can uh, help to understand how the control um, over for of a certain group of population or a certain class of people uh, continues in the gender power dynamics. But at the same time, this concept of hegemonic masculinity was extremely abstract to really pinpoint what exactly um, you know, or, or the, the or to really understand the reality of how power gender power dynamics descriptively operate in real life or at a certain period. Uh, so from and then if we then look at um, masculinity masculinities as something which is uh, defined in uh, in in the, in contrast to what is understood feminine, then I think you know that doesn't really only talk about certain forms or groups of attributions or enactments that comes with being masculinities, but it also has to talk about not these valorified uh, notions, but other, other forms of what it means to be uh, non-feminine, right, of, of, for an individual to be, then I think there can be different forms of masculinities. And then, you know, also where, I come from is when we talk about masculinities, it's actually dismantling the whole system. So meaning we should get rid of if masculinities is defined in a way that population will, uh, you know, be on top or control uh, and, and apply the concept of power over, uh, that will continue remaining as a sense of power or a system that only talks about being or uh, valorizes the those who are on the extreme higher forms of power hierarchy. And then if we are to talk about dismantling it, then I think we need to get rid of all the notions that comes with what it means to be a powerful man in those contexts. So in, from that sense, I guess the understanding of non-hegemonic masculinity or the concept of other forms of positive masculinities really doesn't make sense, right? Um, so and if we are to dismantle patriarchy, then we have to dismantle the system as a whole. We can't say this part of patriarchy is nice or this part of masculinity is nice. 
but people can be more human rather than you know again getting into the gender binary boxes of how men and women are supposed to be enacting but rather you know bringing more human flavor to this conversation to so bring humanity more forward rather than what is what are expected from a particular body or you know, a shape of a, of a body so from that sense i think uh, and and this we also see um happening in the global politics is it's not that hegemonic masculinity or the way it is it was understood being applied in this uh, area um or to really understand the global order that noor was talking about is that it it boils down to that not all ways of being in a power position or the highest level of power position comes with violence all the time there are various tactics that are being applied consciously and subconsciously to bring about that division of who is powerful and who is not so that's something that we really need to understand when we unpack the concept of do we talk about and we see these days that positive masculinity as a term is coming forward so meaning then you can still be masculine and the but remain positive so that doesn't rhyme together if you are understanding masculine as in concept that only caters to powerful and power holding sort of group power holding a certain power we see that also happening in not only at an individual level but also at the country to country level if we look at the politics in our own countries the debate between the two political parties is all about demasculinization of the other party or demasculinization of other individuals or group right so that if that's how the masculinity is work in global paradigm and it's about uh, so if you have to so or someone even in the discourse in media if you look at if there is in politics or or election coming up the whole discourse revolves around masculine norms and whether or not certain person upholds this and relates to or gives the sense that this person is capable of controlling dominating and uh, uh you know sort of uh, controlling and dominating the rest and in the sense that there's people who can control and dominate can run the country so all these notions are understood and that's why it's so difficult for women to be in those spaces and that's what i think we need to challenge this masculine ideologies is then it is entangled with men's bodies whereas there could be other ways of running the system so recently if you looked at you know the discourse that is coming up from new zealand for example the prime minister i think the prime minister recently was saying that i may not be powerful uh, to run a country uh, i may be weak but i think the way we understand powerful and being weak is highly gendered and that also not only relates to individual but relates to how a state is functioning or state is handled or a group is handled so if you don't follow that category and the norms then i think for me the concept of hegemonic masculinity or even the masculinity as such needs to be transformed into something else rather than keeping all the forms of masculinity is intact while only talking about a particular forms of masculinity is that we feel is harmful but and and but actually not realizing that the whole setup of masculinity is, is harmful on in itself for individuals as well as the planet as well as everyone else yeah sorry if that was too long uh, that's, thank you so much yeah i think uh, as i said uh, earlier in the pre discussion our discussion is deep and wide which means that you can talk a lot you know <laughs> uh you can also talk very deep uh, on the concept of things like masculinity and its relationship rela- relationship with the uh, masculine with political with politics so thank you so much for giving us again a lot of insight about how masculinity become very complicated when especially when we talk uh, and connect to uh, the politics we need to talk about the structure over there you know and and we we, we agree here because uh it's related to uh the power itself you know and uh, as you said uh when when you know uh the, the concept uh 
uh, understood as a very complicated uh, as a very complicated uh, idea about how power is held or, or, or how power is held and uh, finally how this power being held is to control others uh, through uh, political system that become a very you know difficult task to uh, entangle to release you know because we not just talk about the individual level of being man or uh, masculine, masculine uh, identity, but uh, it's involved, you know, whole things about the structure, about the norm. Uh, Maskoim already talked about the specific norm uh, of masculine that's really uh, problematic in, in our political life uh, recently when, you know, using violence is acceptable using domination is acceptable. Uh, and even, you know, to some extent, uh, it's clearly uh, up here, you know, in, in uh, public political life, right? How uh, sexual harassment, for example, become acceptable, you know, in the name of, you know, being masculine leaders, for example, like if we see the profile, the political profile, like Donald Trump, for example, he really said that, I do something to these women, you know, without paying. Uh, and he wanna claim that I'm a masculine leader, things like that. But uh, uh, once again, actually, uh, uh, what, kind, what kind of uh, masculine norm is if Maskoim already mentioned earlier about masculine, you know? Is that, once again, I, I am really interested in, you know, uh, elaborating whether uh, you know, there is a uh, norms in, as we already talk about the masculinities in plural, uh, in its plural form, right? But uh, once again, we we also reluctant that there is a possibility to have, you know, uh, a certain masculine norm that uh, you know not really uh, uh, endanger, for example, for gender equality, etc., for non-violence of uh, their life, for example, things like. Uh, but once again, uh, if we talk about uh, in the context of norms in uh, in, in its plural uh, idea, in its plural concept, uh, is that any other norms, uh, you know, masculine norms that uh, once again uh, uh, can challenge that kind of, uh, you know, uh, patriarchal, uh, masculinity norm, for example, things like that. Do you think that is possible, uh, Maskoim? Or as I, yeah. I think norms also created, right? So, yeah. Yeah. but in the reality first, do you think that is possible, uh, you know, like non-masculine uh, norm that's non-violent, non-oppressive, anything, you know, yeah. that will be useful for the, the political leaders, for example, to drive the political life of the country. I think here there is a uh, Bu Ani, I would like to greet Bu Ani first. Hello, Bu. Already joined? Hello, yeah, already here. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, continuing what uh, Laxman has, uh, has said, that uh, basically when we uh, talking about transforming uh, masculinity, is actually transforming uh, masculinity as a system. So, so that's why the term positive masculinity is problematic in some ex and in some extent. So that's why in the, in uh, my work when we uh, start discussing about uh, masculinity among men group. So usually I said that uh, that we have an alternative way to be a man without uh, mentioning that we, we have uh, a way to be a positive masculinity now, uh, but I'm uh, saying that uh, the way we uh, uh, becoming a man uh, so far is there are so many uh, costs that we have to pay. For instance, uh, when we adhere to the notion that uh, being man, uh, it, it should be uh, uh, they uh, should be doesn't express the 
the weakness like expressing uh, uh, sadness because it it will be uh, called as uh, as not masculine yeah. so so that's why uh, we call it as that we we have uh, an alternative way to be to be a man uh, the way that uh, that uh, guy uh, that represent the value of uh, nonviolent equality uh, respectful and so on and so forth toward other people it's not just toward women but toward other people toward men toward other men so that is uh, we we usually uh, uh, discuss. Yeah. So if Farid uh, asked me, is there any other masculinity norms that not dangerous, not harmful? This is quite difficult. I usually uh, say that uh, when we are working with men, we are transforming the individual, we are transforming the the way they relate with other people. And then the, the last one is with transforming uh, social norms that represent the, the values of equality and non-violent and so on and so forth. So, so I think that is uh, uh, my comment. Yeah, I think that's a really important comment. So we really need to understand that masculinity is product of patriarchal system, right? by itself that if we talk about patriarchy, it is uh, uh, related to uh, who, the hierarchical uh, system to, you know, who, who uh, thinks to be uh, having legitimacy to be in the power holder, right? In the power position. And those who in power also uh, view as having legitimacy to dominate others. I think the whole system about uh, you know the the masculine idea, masculinity norm, uh, as a product of patriarchal uh, system or patriarchal ideology is very important here to understand that uh, you know by itself you know it is hard to 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 uh, have different masculinity norm you know rather than this kind of norm who uh, dominating uh, especially when in power you know even when they have no power when uh, it is men, you know, related to masculinity, this will be leading into uh, domination rather than equality. Uh, we have one question here. I think a uh, 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 question of clarification, asking about clarification from Suraya. Suraya is a lecturer in the State University of Surabaya in uh, East Java. Uh, she is asking about if, uh, referring to uh, last month's uh, explanation about the masculinization, you know, uh, uh, for those who have, for those who uh, with uh, masculine norm, you know, if there is a, ma in quotation, if there is a demasculinization, you know, like everywhere, or if there is a massive demasculinization, why masculinity is still there, you know? It's like, you know, play a game. We try, they try to demasculinize everything, but why masculinity is still there, you know, like still dominant? Do you want to respond to that question? I think that's very, you know, tricky question, you know, like on the one hand, uh, those with masculine power or with masculine norm always like to demasculinize other, but on the other hand, by demasculinize other, they also claim their own masculinity, right? So what do you think about that? Uh, Kind of tricky situation. Exactly. Yeah, thank you for that question. It's it's complex, uh, but I'll try to see if I can explain this. Um, so when we look at the global order, so let's look at the global military uh, paradigm, the conflict, right? Uh, so what generally happens is when you consider a particular context where you get a sense of entitlement or you are invited to come into support, what literally that means is, you know, you are already in uh, considered in the higher power hierarchy 
and your notions that you bring on masculinities becomes uh, you know the valorized forms of masculinities at that point in time when you are entering into a country the receiving receiving country or receiving groups then becomes emasculine demasculinated because i think the concept is then you know there is another higher authority that is coming into the picture while the same group was still in authority or can remain in authority in the particular context but once the one that is considered or coming in with a higher even authority then your you know the the masculine authority that was there of that particular group then is questioned so by this this higher authority group coming in uh, with power the the association of this group in a particular context then gets valorized in conjunction with that new entity that is coming and hence that then escalates further to masculinize the the group however if you look at the relationship between the group in a country and the group that was there or the group that was initially considered of the higher authority the the relationship is you know organized in a way that the other group always remains on the higher end of power in other relations all the time so even if there is and then you know whenever one will speak about the other that exertion of sense of power over always becomes a dominant narrative between the relationships and that relationships not only remains in one political paradigm but everything else look at economic paradigm look at international relations paradigm you look at access of resources in those countries so that you know the the whole colonization that happened globally is what really you know explains on how demasculinization demasculinization also occurs in the same hierarchy within the masculinity system um and then can continue become dominant because it then it it for, takes an hydra form so then it doesn't only dominate in that particular country but the relationship of that particular country in other international spaces as well so maybe in the human rights space the negotiations then happen based on this hyper masculine relationship that was there before and then it takes a different narratives and power dynamics in other space so i think and we do see retaliation and that's where the 911 becomes extremely important is the group that is supposedly to be behind 911 was first created by the same country to challenge other dominant groups in the in other parts of the world and in that process so the demasculinization that happened when those group the the groups were created to challenge the other so called dominant groups at that point in time then backfired to to challenge the same global order that was there to so that they are even more masculine or more powerful than who created them at first so there is that dichotomy and the circulation or or the circular that happens as we generally see in for example domestic violence that gets ex- ex- exemplified in the global political order as well so when whenever we talk about dominant uh, globally of a certain narratives of uh, uh, masculine ideologies that still remains intact because the dominance and power over happens in different spaces and the group that is at the lower end of power hierarchy even tries to showcase their masculine order in different space so again a man uh, just making a very concrete example a man who works under a women in an organization you know uh, has to follow the order of a woman who is the boss but so in that power hierarchy the man is on the lower end of the power hierarchy but the man will still retain the notions of masculinity is there as a man right and uh, relates to the system and sometimes push tries to push back against the female boss but eventually because of the hierarchy created in the system the man then gets demasculinized or the his masculinities are challenged however if the person goes back then to the family he tries to even 
prove and regain the masculine ident- identity vis-a-vis the people in the family. And that power over the, that sense of control or sense of demasculinization then gets translated into violence against others who are on the even the lower spectrum of power as compared to. So that dynamics and this enactment that this man does is always informed by the experience of this man in the other spaces where they feel not masculine enough. So that becomes a cycle on in itself and that continues unfortunately then creates the the system whereby the violence and the notions or the relations of men to violence becomes normalized. And that's how this keeps on operating. Not sure if that was helpful um, or maybe uh, Noor or Ruhini may want to add as well. Thank you so much. Before we go to, um, first of all, welcome uh, Ruhaini, Professor Siti Ruhaini Zayatin. Thank you so much in your busy time. You still can join us. Thank you very much, Mas, uh, Mas Fad. Yes, um, uh, my, I think my mind is still uh, uh, in the air. <laughs> Just <laughs> landed. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I really enjoy this, uh, this, uh, this conversation, yeah. Yeah, just take time. Uh, we have a very uh, casual conversation here, even though we have two experts, but it is very casual. Uh, Maswain, if you want to add or please. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Bueni is my teacher <laughs> to introduce me with uh, very basic uh, social science, social uh, science, the- uh, social theory. Yeah? Uh, uh, I, I do hope that Bueni will also help us to clarify some uh, some question and some discussion in this session. Yeah, uh, I think the, the question is quite interesting. Yeah, when there is a demasculine initiation, every why uh, the, the masculinity is still there. I think uh, 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 Laxman has already responded to these questions. My simple response is why the masculinity is still there in our global order, because the masculinization is part of the strategy in sustaining and maintaining the masculinity itself. So uh, the question and so how then to transform the masculinity? So as my, uh, as uh, uh, Laxman said that uh, when we uh, saying about uh, dismantling masculinity is uh, transforming the whole system. So uh, we we have to transform. Yeah, I, I mean uh, we transform the whole system and not uh, seeing that the, the masculinization is part of uh, as uh, uh, as part of how masculinity uh, sustain and maintain, as uh, Laxman said, because uh, uh, as an example, as uh, in, in, in the war or in a 9-11 tragedy, for instance, uh, when one group of men, the masculinized other men as their strategies to, the, uh, to maintain their power over those group of men. So I think that is the, the uh, uh, the problem, yeah. Uh, there's the masculinization, but uh, masculinity is still, order is still there because the masculinization is part of the strategy in sustaining and uh, maintaining the masculinity order. So that's why uh, mas- uh, feminism is becoming important in, the, in this point. Yeah. How um, feminism or feminist movement uh, giving a strategy uh, or uh, on how to 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 dismantling or to transform this uh, the masculinity norms that uh, that create a problem for everyone. It's not just a create a problem for men. Uh, sorry, for women and children, but. Uh, actually also create a problem uh, within a relation between men itself. So uh, I think that that, this, that is the, the uh, I mean, that offered by feminism, uh, because feminism wants to transform those system that, uh, yeah, 
uh, create a problem in, in uh, our society. Yeah, I think that's just my uh, comments. Thank you, Laxman and uh, Mas Boim. I think one thing we can highlight here in as a sort uh, conclusion for uh, explanation is uh, we, we need to understand that masculinity here is a, a system of domination or a, you know system of power. We can transform domination with domination. So we need a, an alternative system here, like the feminist system of equality. That's why. Uh, if we if we use domination to de dominate to de dominate, for example, or if we want to do de masculinization uh, of masculinity, is uh, turn into a vicious cycle, you know, like things like that. You know, that's why if we, if you understand that masculinity uh, is a, a system of domination, we cannot use it to transform the the system, you know. It's it's the it's the, it, uh, even though we try to de dominate you know like to reduce the domination but especially the process of reducing the domination is to claim another domination and as we said that it is also a hierarchy right uh, it's always create another hierarchy those in higher power or or always you know uh, so those who those who in high, in higher power actually try to de masculinize to gain uh, greater power, always things like that. So once again, we need to understand that masculinity here as a system of domination, as a system of hierarchy, as a system of power. You know, like to try to uh, try to uh, reduce the domination of other to gain uh, the greater domination of itself. You know, things like that. So once again, I think we're going to move uh, deeper our conversation uh, to talk about uh, the connection between masculinity and the uh, 9-11 global politics after. I hope that you can uh, take away a lot of uh, understanding from the discussion on the concept and the uh, uh, theory, okay? And I think that's very important foundation for our understanding on how masculinity is very relevant to uh, uh, talking about uh, the 9-11 global poll. Maybe uh, I hope uh, Dr. Siti Rohani Zayatin already ready to uh, join our conversation. So I will give one our, our first question. <laughs> Is it okay? <laughs> I will uh, try. I will try. Yeah. Um, but but Rohani, uh, you see that uh, I think you you very close uh, observe the situation of uh, post 9-11. Uh, in especially it impact to uh, the Muslim world, right? And how, you know, like after 9-11, the Muslim world is a uh, stereotype or even uh, categorized as the enemy of the, the West, for example, like that. And, uh, you know, in, in that claim of being enemy or the enemization, I said enemization or being culprit of the, a lot of problem in the global uh, politics, uh, we also, you know, like the, the West also uh, present a lot of issues related to gender, uh, human rights, women's rights, and also feminism, and, and even masculinity itself, you know, like the, the profile of uh, Muslim men who uh, have beard, for example, wearing uh, turban, uh, things like that become the he hegemonic profile of Muslim men by the West. And that's idea also uh, brought by uh, the West to legitimize the invasion, for example, to you know country like Afghanistan and then Syria or Iraq. Uh, 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 maybe my question is that uh, uh, you know how do you think? Uh, why why do you think uh, here? You know the reflection is why uh, first uh, is that is, is the the claim that. Uh, the Muslim, uh, the enemy of the West is uh, accurate or it is just, uh, you know, like pseudo reality created as a rhetoric by specific group. And also why, uh, you know, uh, by using the issue of gender, masculinity and feminism and women's right in, uh, you know, making the Muslim world as enemy. Uh, what do you think? Why it is important for, you know, the West to, 
uh, you know, present the issue of gender here in creating the new enemy among the Muslim. Um, thank you very much, Mas, Mas Farid. But before I uh, continue my uh, short presentation, I would like also to greet uh, our senior here, Mbak Julia Surya Kusuma. Uh, she, is, uh, she is our mentor, actually. And um, I hope that we will have also the opportunity to uh, listen from uh, from her and also from uh, her and uh, her critical um, uh, response to what's happening uh, in day to day um, conversation and also uh, in much more uh, global and uh, macro system. So I hope Mas Farid that uh, that we also have uh, an opportunity to um, communicate communicate uh, with Mbak Julia and also I would like also to uh, to greet. Uh, some uh, friends here, uh, Mas Adi, uh, and I, I also uh, I'm I saw also my um, uh, my sister here. Uh, Sadra Pihatin is actually my uh, my my sister since we are in um, in the boarding school in Pabelan. Hello, so, love. <laughs> Good to see you on my screen. <laughs> Thank you, uh, um, Mas Farid. I, yes, uh, I think. Um, uh, I, I I just continue what Laxman and also uh, Nor Nor Hasim. It is very difficult to me to say Nor Hasim because the the oh, lovely yes. name <laughs> just... yes the lovely name of uh, 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 of his is actually for him. So I think um, uh, what 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 has been discussed uh, earlier when uh, I was still in the car. Is very um, it's, it's very important and it's very basic to understand what's happening uh, uh, now in the uh, in the global uh, uh, politics uh, and also the recent developments. Uh, particularly, uh, we are actually uh, struck by uh, the return uh, and the uh, resurface of uh, Taliban in Afghanistan. So, before uh, <coughs> uh, coming to your question, I just. Uh, I would like to um, uh, to reflect uh, my uh, my impressions of being in Afghanistan before um, uh, uh, before the uh, before the the coming of Taliban and uh, I think it's in the beginning of the pandemic. So uh, I, I I really I feel I really feel uh, what uh, has been. Uh, uh, explained in detail by Laxman and also by Boeing uh, what's happening in Kabul so that is actually the, the expression of what um, uh, what we uh, tonight discuss about hyper uh, masculinity in in my own language is maybe more than uh, that stronger than that hyper masculinism so this is actually the thing that um, underlying all the uh, all the uh, all the conflict and all the um, all the complications of uh, of, of our um, political uh, system uh, right now, and uh, in relation to uh, your question, my understandings of um, 9/11 is actually uh, the peak uh, in the blow of uh, the class of uh, hyper masculinism. So that is actually. Uh, uh, we, we are struck on, on how um, uh, uh, the world uh, witnessed such kind of uh, horror, such, uh, such kind of um, tragedy and, and catastrophe in the, uh, in the 20th, uh, 21st uh, 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 century. So that is actually, um, I would say that this is uh, the, class, the class of hyper masculinism. And uh, uh, and nine uh, nine eleven is uh, in mm -hmm. fact uh, the long uh, the long battle and also the long competition the long conflicts of uh, both uh, masculine uh, hyper masculinism uh, both in the West and also in uh, in Islam. So I I conquer what uh, Laxman said that uh, uh, explained uh, earlier that. Um, what we are what we are witnessing now is actually the response, the masculine, the hyper masculine uh, response to uh, the hyper uh, uh, masculine uh, power over uh, uh, people. So, uh, so, uh, so, what is what, what is the uh, the alternatives? Yeah. So, I think um, 
uh, before be, uh, also before I I also touch upon how the Muslim will uh, will also respond um, uh, uh, to what uh, the West uh, used and also abused. Yeah, the um, the 9/11 tragedy. I would also uh, uh, I would like also uh, highlight on uh, how we construct the alternative when um, the ideology, when the narrative uh, of 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 our lives, the narrative of uh, politics in our lives, uh, and and also the uh, uh, the day to day um, encounters is in the uh, in the gender binary opposition uh, opposition yeah. so when, when you have masculinity then you have uh, femininity so is there any uh, is there any um any uh, alternative uh, expression or alternative uh, kata, uh, category uh, uh, other than uh, masculinity and uh, femininity so that is actually uh, also my question uh, i think uh, in in uh, in non western world like indonesia india and also uh, in the middle east uh, i'm not sure about middle east because uh, because uh, structurally the, the language i mean arabic language is actually closed uh, to the western uh, language but non uh, non western like indonesia uh, then uh, india might have uh, a different understandings of uh, categorizations uh, uh, on uh, on mas uh, masculine and feminine, because um, the uh, the ultimate uh, or the uh, the the refined uh, person in in the in the culture, uh, especially uh, a particular uh, sorry, uh, for example, in Japanese culture is in uh, in uh, somehow uh, different from uh, what we learn uh, from. The narrative of masculinity in the West. So, so the figure of the re refined man in uh, is actually uh, maybe feminine. So that is actually the things that we have to uh, also take into account as whether we will uh, use um, the quote unquote the Western narrative of masculine and feminine, or maybe uh, we, we could have some uh, alternatives uh, from uh, of, uh, from other culture. Sasiku Murata, for example, um, um, uh, enlightened us about yin and yang. So, so, and uh, the Tao of, uh, in the Tao of Islam, for example, um, she mentioned about uh, um, uh, positive, uh, post uh, positive character. The positive, the, the positive character is um, closely related to how uh, 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 the nurturing and the uh, the caring, uh, the caring of the nature, the caring of humanity, uh, is actually the um, the 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 the, uh, the refined uh, character of uh, of human. So that is uh, uh, that is also the the alternative that uh, we might also insert in uh, our discussion about. Uh, 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 masculinity. So this is actually uh, my response to uh, Poem and also Laxman. And your your questions on uh, on what is the response of the of, of the Muslim uh, or other uh, Muslim worlds on 9 So my first uh, my, my my first response is this is actually the class the class of hyper masculinity both uh, in the West and also in the Muslim world. And uh, uh, and um, the the emergence and the the surface of um, the so-called uh, revivalist groups in in uh, in the in the Muslim world is in fact uh, the uh, the 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 response yeah? the, the 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 response and also the challenge uh, to the hyper. Uh, hyper masculinity, hyper masculinism of the ruling power in uh, Muslim uh, countries as well. So countering, so that uh, as you also mentioned that uh, the way uh, that the 
uh, the rivalrous uh, groups uh, counter to hypermasculinism uh, of the ruling power uh, in in Muslim. It's create also uh, a conflict. It's create uh, also uh, violence, extremism there, and also we we witness uh, in all of the in the Muslim uh, country and not uh, uh, no exception of Indonesia as well that we uh, this is actually the replications of uh, hyper masculinity hyper masculinism yeah. so that is um, uh, actually the, uh, uh, the the things that we have to uh, to think about uh, what is actually the the future of our, of our politics yeah Coleman for example say that now a uh, tough Tough politics, tough state. Yeah, tough, uh, tough state is uh, a masculine, rigid, exclusive, and um, glorifying, uh, glorifying uh, upon identity, dominations. So it has to be shifted uh, into uh, more uh, caring, more cooperative, more um, solidarity, uh, and then a more. Uh, how to say it? It's uh, upholding uh, more humanity and respecting to you, uh, human uh, humankind. So that is actually, and and this uh, and she said that this is actually feminizing feminizing politics. But uh, but our question is 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 that uh, actually the uh, the alternative that uh, we want to uh, we want to uh, uh, have in um, in shifting. Uh, the the already the hegemony of this uh, um, masculinism, yeah, and um, of course, if uh, if we see uh, in, in our level in the global, there is um, the, a clash between the West and, and Muslim in 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 in, uh, uh, in a sense of uh, hyper masculinity, but in the in the in the national, it 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 also happened cascading. It is the cascading. Uh, 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 trends of uh, hypermasculinism is also there. So it, it is also um, uh, reflects uh, the difficulty uh, in um, uh, in uh, thinking about uh, the alternative when it's also uh, uh, it's also um, it's not rooted, maybe, but uh, it is there, in, uh, in, and also in the in the Muslim countries like uh, like uh, like Indonesia. So I would like to end this uh, uh, this remark by saying that um, I, I I pick one from Laxman uh, uh, on humanity. Humanity is the central there. So how we construct whatever uh, the name of the alternative. The, um, but it should be directed to how to uh, to respect and to value uh, human uh, humanity for all people, uh, men, women, uh, um, uh, and, and 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 other other uh, other uh, categories, and um, uh, of course both uh, uh, the West and also uh, the Muslim. Has to arrive in much more moderate approach, much more uh, moderate approach to humanity. Uh, it can be, uh, uh, it can be in uh, in in the light of uh, human rights, or also uh, in in other in, uh, in other system or democracy. But the importance of uh, of the two is venturing to the middle, venturing to the middle to see. Um, uh, uh, to see and to, to also to uh, to uh, to understand way in which uh, all the the values has to be uh, dedicating uh, dedicated to our whole uh, uh, humanity. So um, yeah, in term in term of uh, human rights, for for example, how the issue of uni universalism and relativism is still there, and there is no point actually to. Uh, uh, to uh, come to uh, uh, a common understanding uh, of that, and um, and 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 the reason uh, is because that both uh, both the West and also Muslim or Islam is actually stands in the very in the age uh, of uh, you know of 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 the, the the spectrum, 
And it's what uh, Tarek Ali said, uh, the problem that we have now is actually uh, uh, the class of masculinism and also the class of fundamentalism. The, the class of secular fundamentalism and Islamic fundamentalism. So the things that we have to, uh, to do, all of us now, is uh, we have to be the agents of the moderate, the moderate Islam and the moderate West. So, so because all the, all the, uh, of the extreme age of, uh, of, um, of their spectrum, it will uh, always entail of the exclusivism. It can be very exclusive, patriarchy, uh, 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 masculines, uh, violence is there, extremism is there. So we have to venture into a uh, more uh, moderate path uh, in understanding this so that we can uh, refine the masculinity, we can also refine the uh, femininity, and also we can uh, refine all of the values that we have uh, and then to be dedicating uh, this uh, globally for uh, the betterment of human humankind and humanity. So I will I give uh, uh, I give back uh, the time uh, uh, to you, Mas Farid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mbak Ruhaini. Uh, this very comprehensive explanation, and you already relate uh, how you know our conceptualization of masculinity and femininity also matters in talking about the uh, politics and i think it's, uh, it's like kind of sum up uh, our you know uh, discussion so far you know on how uh, uh, the idea of masculinity or or you know masculin masculinity as uh, the system of power the system of domination uh, it's also uh, cross-cultural, you know, if, if we can see that uh, uh, Dr. Ruhaini already mentioned, uh, we see the problem also in, in the West uh, who claim themselves as, as the savior in the name of, you know, the most uh, society with uh, gender equality, for example, the most feminist country, for example, like the state. but it's also happened, you know, like we, we see the picture of uh, uh, masculinist politics in in this area. It's also happened in in area in the Muslim world too. You know that's why to categorize you know who the savior and who the enemy here is also uh, need to be very critical, right? Uh, which means that you know again when when we when we talk about that two category, we deny that uh, even in the Western society itself there is a uh, people who become the uh, let's see the, the the victim of you know their own political masculinity for example you know like in the case of the United States for example during we, we clearly see during the, the era of Trump and uh, then we have the response from the uh, Muslim community when we, when they said that I don't want to uh, use the concept from the Western, you know, from the West, because it's too far, it's too liberal, for example, it's not fit and not really compatible to our tradition. We have our own tradition of gender equality, for example, of, uh, of the so-called Islamic feminism, you know, using tradition, using uh, uh, Quranic teaching. But if, if we see very critical, you know, the tradition also problematic because it who, the, who have the control over that tradition too, you know. That's why uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Rohani also give us uh, insight very important here not to, you know, not to see uh, that's West versus East or versus Muslim in a very strict boxes uh, without you know, digging very deeper the day-to-day -day problem in uh, both uh, contexts. For example. And I think one thing when uh, Dr. Ruhani mentioned about, uh, you know, uh, femininity versus uh, masculinity and asking about the alternative, I think that's again, you know, the idea of binary, of hetero heteronormativity is very hegemonic here. And we can think there is an alternative here, you know, uh, because when we think about masculinity, the, the other side thinks about the, the, the uh, femininity. We, we never think that there are alternatives, there are choices. Uh, 
uh, there are uh, something else is besides masculinity and uh, femininity. We really need to, you know, uncover ourselves to free ourselves from this kind of hegemonic uh, idea or concept about uh, binary. And and the same, I think, when we talk about the uh, masculinity too, you know, like uh, if there is people in power, so the only choice is people under the power. You know, we don't see the dynamic here. We see we don't see the the choices here. Uh, the same then when 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 we think about masculinity, the only choice is femininity. Maybe if we see in the reality, for example, Dr. Rohani already mentioned in the case of India, even in Indonesia, you know, there are people who really can identify themselves very flexible in terms of gender or in terms of uh, gender identity, you know. Uh, uh, to show that, in fact, in the reality, there are many uh, alternative. But once again, who control that? You know that that process of the creation of the alternative to fill the problem. You know because uh, uh, once again, uh, uh, the whole idea is about the, for example, the the hegemonic I, uh, ideology of patriarchism that control everything here. You know. Uh, uh, that, need really uh, I, uh, involving a lot of people, uh, but not easy way. Uh, maybe uh, I, I would like to invite the audience to also involve in our uh, conversation, if there is any. Uh, we have Mbak Julia, we have Mbak, I think we also, I also see Mbak Nur Sabani Kaca Singkana. Uh, everybody, if you wanna, uh, you know, uh, involve in our conversation, uh, please feel free. But Julia, do you wanna say something? Or you fall asleep? <laughs> or anybody else? Yeah. Uh, uh, if not, let's just continue. Maybe you know, like the uh, we we talk a lot about the West, but we uh, we also need to talk about ourselves. You know, like. Like Mbak uh, um, Ruhani already mentioned about the problem in uh, in the Muslim world itself, you know, in the Muslim community itself, which is related to the uh, fundamentalism, you know, uh, the religious fundamentalism, which need to be countered with the uh, so-called uh, Islam wasatiyah or moderate Islam or more tolerant Islam here, and we see, you know, like. Uh, the, the fundamentalist group also used the idea or the concept of gender, uh, women's right, and also uh, being perfect man, for example. Maybe later we, we also can ask the phenomena like in Indonesia. Uh, there has been, uh, you know, campaign among the uh, uh, Muslim guys or, or Muslim men, you know, uh, who really reject the idea of feminism. Uh, and it's uh, you know uh, it's a detailed idea. Like for example, they they reject they 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 you know campaign for uh, ideal men, uh, ideal Muslim men as you know men who with beard, and then become the head of household or head of the uh, relation rela relation, and also they reject uh, you know for example. Uh, uh, dating or the anti free marital dating, you know, things like that. And they always show that, you know, uh, uh, this is the ideal man in, in, uh, under the Islamic uh, tradition. And do uh, you know, it looks simple, right? You know, like in daily life, we can see uh, like the celebrity figure, for example, campaigning about how being hijra, how being uh, a good Muslim. But if we look at deeper, the connection, this daily life, this simple, look simple phenomena with, you know, the whole thing we, ju we just talked about, the effect of 9-11 uh, politics, who uh, Maspoim earlier in the uh, discussion mentioned about, the, you know, become the model of solving the problem, become the model of, you know, being uh, uh, masculinist politic, for example, like that. Do you see really connection between this big impact of 9-11 politics, you know, that show, Mas Boim already declared, that show 
uh, as the clear indicator of masculine norm in politics with this kind of daily phenomena of you know uh, being good man in based on the Islamic tradition with with beard and the implication for uh, the idea of or the movement of gender equality in specific context like for example in Indonesia anyone want to respond to that question you know do you, do you really see the connection between that big event of 9/11 Yeah. with that daily you know uh, daily phenomena or you know yeah, personal or individual life because i think if we really need to understand that that will be very important for our movement you know that this is this root is in the politics not just in that uh, daily or individual phenomena mm. uh, asboim or mbak ruhaini or anybody else <coughs> Feel free. Uh, okay, uh, Mas, Mas, yeah. Mas Farid. Um, yeah, please. So yeah. um, I think uh, it 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 started. Yeah, it started before 9-11, I think, uh, or mm-hmm. um, that um, masculinism uh, actually uh, dominating Western uh, uh, politics. Uh, we we can learn how um, I mean like the West the the US uh, uh, they uh, they they made their business in the Middle East for example the issue the issue of Israel and Palestine yeah so that is actually uh, long before nine eleven and as I said earlier that nine eleven is actually the picture of this uh, hyper and ugly uh, uh, masculinism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and it's uh, then uh, co- uh, continue to the invasion yeah invasion of um, uh, or some uh, the, the invasion of Afghanistan and before um, uh, Iraq and also um, uh, Libya I think so what is the point of uh, of the US a, a unilateral um, I mean invasions uh, to Iraq and also to Libya? So that is actually um, it creates um, anti-Western. It creates anti-US, and and um, uh, the uh, the consequences of uh, of this uh, aftermath and the response uh, of the Muslim uh, is actually fighting back um, uh, this uh, ugly uh, invasion here yeah, with. Uh, with the with the same manner, yeah. so it, it's actually the um, uh, uh, the the times that we witness the vast um, uh, reservation uh, militants groups reservation of um, of uh, what uh, now we uh, we mm-hmm. recognize them as the Salafist group. And when it's come to the the Salaf the Salafist group, and it's come to the Islamist groups, yeah. So, uh, so they will adopt uh, their conservative Islam. They will also uh, adopt the fundamentalist uh, uh, Islam, which um, um, yeah, uh, in the center is actually to. Um, to reclaim uh, the the identity of being distinctive muslim distinctive islam and what is uh, what then so following this uh, this claim is actually um, accumulating uh, all the differences accumulating the distinctiveness uh, between islam and the rest of the world and also distinctiveness uh, with the west And and of course, uh, logically, it will comes to the approach, uh, the uh, the uh, the rigid approach uh, to Islam, the conservative approach to Islam, and the implication is of course, masculinism is there, and uh, women become the site of battle. Yeah, I mean it's like um, the militants group, the Islamic militants group will uh, will put um, women as. Uh, the moral guidance, uh, the guardian, the moral guidance, the guardian, as well as um, 
uh, the the uh, uh, the site of uh, the identity, and to make it uh, distinctive from uh, from the West, of course they observe uh, and, and and they control uh, uh, women uh, women as such uh, to um, uh, to claim that this is actually the true uh, Islam as we witness now uh, mm. with the with the Taliban. So um, uh, uh, what, what's happening in, in Afghanistan, even though I involved uh, in, the, uh, in, uh, in the project called in the, uh, of Afghan Indonesia uh, Solidarity Network. And we um, invited uh, all the components of, um, of the ruling uh, groups in, in Afghanistan, including the Taliban. Into Indonesia, and we are talking about the future, uh, the future of uh, of Afghanistan being um, a moderate, uh, being a modern uh, uh, Muslim uh, country, and uh, and also there um, we talk about we talk about um, what is actually. Uh, uh, what is the proper uh, roles of women as as we as uh, as we observe Indonesia, for example? Uh, so that is actually um, uh, the things that it 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 will not really uh, comes uh, in uh, um, as soon as we, uh, we 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 expect because Taliban well, uh, Taliban uh, Taliban ulama and then the Taliban. A political party, they uh, in that time they committed that they will uh, observe, uh, uh, I mean, like uh, the more open uh, Islam in order or uh, in order to uh, to uh, accommodate uh, the position of, of women. But uh, we witness now that um, uh, the way that uh, they uh, they reclaims the, the identity is actually using and abusing uh, 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 women body and controlling them as part of um, their identity and also part of their authority. So that is actually uh, the thing that we have to work out uh, in our own society. And so what happens in, in Taliban uh, will also um, uh, um, become uh, kind of uh, 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 the, the, the new hope also for, for other, uh, for other groups too. Uh, to follow, and this is, uh, and we have to take this very seriously because um, the uh, the coming back of Taliban and also the uh, the revivals of the, the militant in Indonesia, it will uh, substantially it will uh, uh, affect the way that we uh, promote and uh, the way that we advocate for. Uh, now women's rights and also gender equality that, that we are now very proud of. So, so and, and it, 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 it will also uh, uh, touch upon our daily, day-to-day -day life as also reflecting now in how uh, these uh, uh, Islamist groups, uh, for example, they, uh, uh, they uh, rejected and they try to curve uh, their our initiative of having um, a new laws, uh, a new law on um, uh, uh, eliminating uh, sexual uh, violence. So that is, and, and this is uh, really uh, uh, answering your question as whether uh, this uh, macro structure um, of masculinism, it uh, then also touch upon our day-to-day uh, -day lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Mbak Ruhaini. Uh, Laksman or Mas Nur, uh, do you want to add or respond? Sure, yeah, I don't see Nur there. Um, but no, I absolutely agree <clears throat> on, and I think you know, it also has to do with the way Islam as a religion is understood and interpreted by various groups around the world. And it goes back also not to what is happening recently, but we'll also have to understand how this uh, dichotomy has been operating uh, in history as well. The issue of uh, Israel and Palestine is primarily about the struggle between the what is called Christianity versus 
which one is pure and versus Islam and which one is purer and who is supposed to be you know, guarding the, the, that small part of the land. And also in case of the whole, uh, in, in Afghanistan, for example, if you look at 70s, you know, people wouldn't have, uh, you know, weren't you wearing uh, the dresses that we see these days. It was more open and, you know, women were more free to go to universities. If you look at the whole history of Middle East, the first global university for women was created in, in Middle East. So we have to really understand how certain groups created a dominance and, and, started in you know reinforcing a certain particular one way narrative of what other groups are and how that created the whole othering system and hence the enemy system because of how the certain ideals were assumed or to be superior than the rest in the global south so that also has to do with the whole uh, colonization that used to happen much way before on how that was created. So the whole creation of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh was based simply on the religion. And that was not that people in those part of the world you know, realized or created that, but it was created by someone else, right? And the irony of that is that we who are in this land and or in this part of the world don't realize what others did on us, but then rather followed the same principle. And that to say that is at the global political order, the colonization that is not only happening in physical sense, but all to intellectually and ideologically is becoming. So if you look at the whole, you know, uh, there is a comment in the chat box from Hussein is also confusing and complicating matter on the use of terms and how we define these terms also becomes important. Where is the definition coming from? Are we just simply taking definitions of what it means to be a man in one context or in Western part, that is what is happening right now. The definition of what it means to be a masculine man is now being influenced by the rhetorics that are coming from global North. And the rhetoric that used to be there in the global South or in our countries, no more validate to those ideals that are created and hence the same sense of masculinity at that point in time, as compared to that is being influenced by the global discourse are then feminized. And, and then there is an hyper reaction to that to create an, on another form. So in that sense, I think that's where Hussein, your idea of the concept of masculine characteristics that all men see in themselves is problematic because then if that's, the the ideals or you refer to uh, who is that um, uh, yeah. Eric Newman and Carl Jung, you know their concept of the origin and history of consciousness is is interesting. But then the history of consciousness from a gender point of view, you need to understand the history of consciousness has been highly gendered, and whatever ideals we as men and boys carry and see that that's our essence is gendered and masculine and masculinism plays a very important role in the, what we called crisis of masculinities or crisis of manhood. Because if that's where the male ego is challenged, that's the problem. Ultimately, masculinism is around and then all, all masculinity is around is this male ego and male fantasies being upheld or the fantasies and egos of those who are who claim to be on higher end of the power hierarchy, then that's where the problem lies at the root. It's not about problem being a man or being a woman or being a trans. The problem is what gets enact attached to those bodies and expected from the society as an enactment in the power structure is problematic. And hence the sense, the sense that we have as what constitutes as I am a man is problematic from that sense. And that's where I think the issue of also looking at Muslim or Islam or groups or non-Christians in the global political order right now at the given situation, non-Christians as a homogeneous enemy group is problematic. I don't. I, I think there is needs to be a conscious effort from those who don't align to these hyper ideologies of, of power and dominance 
need to come out from in front and say there are already alternatives probably in the the practice that we have as groups that are looking to be fostering more non violence more human approach to being be, human beings uh, 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 that we need to speak out and showcase these alternates already at the front and in the politics so that we can counter those in a small uh, groups of people that stay stay at the extreme forms of power and hierarchy but also you know and there are um, and i fully agree with dr rohini that the concept the, the concept that we have in the eastern philosophy the history are very powerful when it comes to humanity unlike what we have been observing in the western culture these days is the eastern philosophy is extremely rich and how can we bring that positive sides of the the eastern philosophy to the fore becomes extremely critical but when i say eastern philosophy i also would like to recognize we are not trying to foster the genghis khan models of man right you know which preludes even the western invasion of the world so we are not trying to you know valorize again the genghis khan ideologies but more like the ideologies that buddhism tried to create it in the beginning and the kind of uh, the muslim ideologies around sensitivity humanity that used to be there the sense of fraternity and relationships that are, we used to see in our parts of the world those positive coexistence uh, support mechanisms that we used to have for each other needs to be highlighted when we say that again to highlight that in even in histories there was differences on ultimately how women would experience this power dynamics that ultimately needs to challenge and that's why we need to uh, work from the feminist ideology to dis- dismantle the system that we see at the moment that is at root uh, at the problem is that how do we then look at it from a systems transformation perspective becomes really important so it's not about uh, you know um, uh, transforming men into something else it's about transforming what is considered the ideals that are hegem- that are dominant at the moment which are at the problems but bring forward the caring nurturing aspect of human being to the fore and celebrate the diversity you know one way there are multiple ways of caring but if there is a caring that doesn't look at oppre- uh, oppressing the rest dominating the rest using violence against others treating others as opposite as enemies that's something we really need to challenge uh, and and uh, come together from different sectors different groups different religious groups and different uh, ideals to come together and challenge this domination and i think that not only created the the circle of enemy or the dichotomy of enemy who is who is enemy uh, and and challenging masculinities or masculinism with the hyper masculinism or masculinity is not the solution Thank you, uh, Lasman and Dr. Ruhani. Mas Boim, do you want to say something uh, responding to this question? About, yeah, uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, my internet connection is unstable, so it's up and down. Uh, but uh, uh, Bu, uh, Bu Ruhani and Lasman already respond that uh, what happened in the global contact and then uh referring to the 9/11 tragedy uh, very much influence uh the relationship between uh, west and muslim world and then the n- narrative uh about the masculinity uh, that uh, hap- uh that happened in in the muslim world like uh, farid mentioned uh the ideal the ideas of manhood within muslim world very much related to uh, the agenda of uh, the muslim world uh, fighting the west so 
because the only way to, the only way to fight again the, the West, uh, we need to have a strong man, the dominant man, and superior man. So that I think uh, uh, part of uh, I think the the I ideal uh, or the concept of manhood that now uh, created by the Muslim world is part of that. Uh, and then um, I would like to respond about uh, how to, to, uh, to transform a, a this kind of situation because uh, in Muslim, uh, whether in Muslim world or in the West, they are similar in sustaining in uh, maintaining the ideas of uh, hegemonic uh, masculinity. Uh, so uh, according to me, uh, to transform uh, this kind of situations, it is important to, uh, to always uh, offer an alternative ideas of manhood for uh, our uh, future generations. I think uh, that is a, the challenge. Um, Fad probably mentioned that uh, uh, a fundamentalist group is also using social media in introducing the ideas of men who, according to them. Uh, and at the same time, uh, when they promote the ideal of uh, ideal manhood uh, that characterized by domination, superiority, physical strength, and so on and so forth, and at the same time, they're also promoting uh, ideas of femininity that characterized by uh, uh, submissive and so on and so forth, and then uh, they are discriminated, they are domesticated, and so on and so forth. So. Uh, according to me, it is important to uh, always uh, uh, challenge these ideas by giving an alternative model of manhood and alternative model of being uh, being a woman. And I think uh, humanity should be become uh, uh, main main reference uh, for both men and women. I think that is my comment. Right? Sorry for the internet connection yeah. because it's uh, mm -hmm. up and down. Stand. Yeah, probably. Uh, Thank, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Raini, Laxman, and uh, Mas Boim. Uh, later, I would like to invite Hussein himself to talk because Hussein is a refugee from Afghanistan. He is now based in uh, one of the refugee camp in, I think, in Tanjung Pinang. I think it, it will be very interesting to, you know, share his experience about how, you know, the 9-11 politics really give impact to uh, men like, uh, like uh, Hussein uh, with his experience of refugee. Of course, the experience of being refugee is not just personal or individual or daily uh, experience, but it's also, you know, related to the uh, global political dynamic. Uh, but before before I invite Hussein, I would like to highlight a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, the whole idea we talked about uh, from uh, Dr. Ruhaini and then from Laxman and from Maspoim is how masculinity become very important uh, framework to see the complexity of global political structure here, right? Uh, from the idea of colonization, it, uh, uh, in fact, you know, like the the uh, Orientalist uh, uh, Edward Said, for example, really clearly mentioned that uh, West always see the others, especially the the Orient, those who in the West as the you know like the feminine who who uh, need to be dominated by the West as the uh, masculine uh, entity, for example. That's that's really clear in in the rhetoric of. Uh, the uh, political leaders and the media itself, especially the popular media who don't really know the complexity of uh, uh, political context in the West you know, or in the, in the East uh, as very dynamic and very plural. They always see uh, the East as uh, homogene or as uh, singular, you know, is everything is not dynamic, for example, things like that. And 
uh, as I said in the in the introduction, there is the idea of saving the the Muslim women from the Muslim men, for example, you know, because there is an operation based on gender uh, hierarchy, etc. Things like that. So once again, we see how uh, uh, masculinity becomes very important uh, framework to see the complexity of global political structure here from the idea of colonization and male colonization into the even the daily life as Masko mentioned. Uh, so now I would like to, uh, Hussein, do you wanna, uh, uh, if, if I can invite you to share, you know, how the 9-11 situation and then its connection to, you know, <laughs> the situation in Afghanistan and finally you end up to experience uh, being refugee like uh in, in current situation maybe that's very you know in the in the in the angle of also in the angle of being men you know from afghanistan and currently being a refugee but if you don't really uh feel comfortable to talk let's feel free just just select what you want to uh, express please uh hussein okay uh first of all thank you for it for uh, inviting me and it is quite uh, an honor to be here. Your connection is not really stable. Hey. Yeah, he's living, he, he lived in... Uh... Hello, Hussein. Maybe you don't need to use the... You don't, you don't need your camera on. And I feel conscious here because uh, the presence of all. Maybe just off the camera, this will be helpful. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Even my boy am on counter the problem with the internet. <laughs> Uh, uh, anyone want to? Uh, are you still there, Hussein? Uh, yes, yes. Is it okay, clear please. now? Yeah, it's better. Okay. So now, uh, first of all, thank you for for inviting me, and it is quite uh, an honor for me to be here, and uh, and I feel quite uh, anxious speaking here because in the presence of all this. Uh, uh, this, of all of uh, those uh, important figures that you invited here to speak. And um, as, uh, as Farid pointed out, uh, I'm an Afghan refugee uh, living in Tanjung Penang city. Uh, so it's been for seven years that I've been living as a refugee here in Indonesia. So, um, and Farid pointed out, uh, asked me specifically to talk about 9-11 and the effects of that on my life. Well, um, personally, 9-11 comes as, uh, for me, as, as, uh, as for me and for my people, as, a, as something positive. And uh, when it happened, uh, the effects of that uh, come to the end of bar Taliban barbarism. Uh, and the, the, the brutal practice of uh, uh, Taliban rules on Afghanistan, especially uh, on ethnic minority uh, Hazara, that um, they've uh, continued massacring Hazaras there. So I'm one of the Hazara people too. So before that, when 9-11 when happened, I didn't know it, but when the, when the American, uh, when the American, the, occupied our countries and they they brought relatively peace to some of places that wanted peace and some of the places that did, that didn't relate with the Taliban so uh, and and the and the education and democracy and uh, some sort of uh, and stable the secure and a hopeful future began in, in, in some part of Afghanistan so and the area that I was living, it is in a small area, but it was uh, one of those areas that is, uh, is deep, that is deeply um, gained uh, advanced in education and uh, other form of democracy, kind of uh, uh, modern development improvement. So 
but uh, now that but that was only for the small part of the Afghanistan, which is in rural area called Jawli in Ghazni province. So outside of that, uh, Taliban is still controlled outside of that places. So when, when, whenever people had to go outside of it, they had to face Taliban. Uh, so, and then that, that, that caused me to seek asylum and uh, coming here to Indonesia. Uh, but um, as, as, uh, as much as sorrow, as much as damage, as much as, uh, uh, as you pointed out, the political uh, changes and uh, that 9-11 created around the world. So, but personally for me and for my people, it was something as a good, uh, something as a positive, and despite that, that it, uh, from outside view, uh, the American presence in Afghanistan viewed as the something occupation, occupation of the, some other land, but, but for some uh, people in Afghanistan who felt deeply affected by the Taliban barbarism, it was something as a positive. So, um, but uh, what was that good for the future of my country? Uh, absolutely not. And no one, wa no one wants to uh, have uh, foreign people occupy land and then rule over. Like no one wants that. But, uh, but actually, but if, if that would be replaced by the Taliban back and it would be a worse. So that's what exactly happened. And, uh, and in during the, this uh, 20 years, uh, we hope that the American presence also would, uh, would bring an, uh, a powerful uh, democratic government that, that wouldn't allow Taliban to come into power. So, but that didn't happen. So that's quite unfortunate. And, uh, and that it still affects my life here uh, as a refugee here because my family lives there. And um, there's whole like, uh, they still continue to massacre Hazara people in, in, in Afghanistan. So in nowadays, and they still do it. But despite that, they, they, that media, media presence is, is very rare in the rural area of Afghanistan. So this kind of the, uh, a trust system Taliban commit in the rural area of Afghanistan doesn't doesn't come to the media doesn't doesn't come to the public eyes. So, yes, that's um, I think that's all my thought about the 9/11 uh, and my life. Thank you, Fai. So much, uh, Hussein, for sharing your experience. Is an example of how you know that big event of 9/11 give impact to you know even daily person like uh, Hussein. You know, in, in, uh, in it's very clear example. Uh, but again, I think uh, Hussein told us about very uh, important point here about you know uh, not to uh, not to see uh, like the situation especially in, the, in 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 Afghanistan related to the uh, post 9/11 as a you know very static or monolithic situation you know when we see who is the enemy once again who is the enemy and who is the hero here for some people as, as uh, 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 Hussein said maybe uh, the the presence of foreigner especially the United States can save them you know from from uh, the violent situation, but from others, maybe not. So once again, you know, there is a complexity here, uh, but uh, above that situation, we see how, you know, once again, uh, power, especially power based on masculinity used as a, a center of game here, you know, to control people, to dominate, and then to uh, even to oppress those who, uh, in less powerful position, those who not have access to, to, to power. And we, we see the, you know, the implication or the impact here. People like Hussein and we see many other, uh, especially women, you know, who uh, experience bad things under this situation. They have no choice, even though there are a lot of times, but they, they don't have choice because once again, there is an ideology of domination 
and masculinity become very powerful tool to uh, especially to legitimize that uh, power that uh, uh, power domination is accessible here in everywhere you know? uh, because we don't have enough time to continue our discussion uh, uh, you know I know this like uh, floating uh, final here uh, conclusion but we already get a lot of insight here on, on how masculinity become very powerful uh, tool in global political structure right now but also masculinity become very important framework to understand this kind of situation you know uh, the continuous uh, the continuous uh, occasion that involve operation that involve domination that involve neo-colonization and even violence everywhere uh, in different name, you know, based on uh, feminism, you know, sometimes feminism also brought out as legitimacy to, you know, to oppress others. But on the other hand, we also see in the, in the other context, the uh, religion also used to, to uh, you know, like to defend, but in that uh, defense, they also use domination and violence. Um, once again, uh, uh, there is a complex, uh, you know, relation between masculinity and uh, politics here that we need to work really hard, uh, not only to find the alternative, that, but to make, you know, like to transform in, in our concept here, it to transform our politics into more non-violence. We, we, can, we, can, we cannot use masculine anymore, but we, 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 we need to, better situation of politics that is non-violence, that is non-oppressive, that is bring equality, not only among the genders, but also among the uh, ethnic groups, among the, uh, you know, among the countries, among the different community in the world uh, as a, a center of our political life. Uh, but it needs really uh, work hard, uh, uh, the involvement of everybody here from uh, the political elites, but it's very hard to get the political elite to involve in this kind of discussion, you know. But again, you know, we need to step to create a small step to, uh, you know, to make move, yeah, you know, to make run. But we are aware that that kind of things, you know, uh, the global politics uh, really give serious implication to many people, uh, like people like uh, Hussein. So we, we are aware uh, that. There is something need to do. There is something need to be uh, uh, changed here. Uh, before I close, I think uh, we're going to invite all the speakers to maybe uh, if you have any uh, closing remarks here, uh, last words before we close the discussion. Uh, we start from uh, Dr. Ruhaini first. Uh, yeah, uh, Mas Farid, I think um, your offer uh, is quite uh, valid that uh, we have to bring, um, I mean, the, the politics uh, to uh, the situation where uh, humanity and humankind are respected, differences are celebrated, and um, uh, peace, has, uh, peace uh, should prevail to uh, everybody with all um, uh, social, political, and economic backgrounds. I think uh, you know, this is the way that we uh, uh, we uh, give the alternatives to the hyper uh, masculinity, the masculinism that dominating uh, our current uh, uh, global politics. Thank you. Thank you, Rani. Uh, next, uh, uh, last one. Your closing word. Uh, my closing word is, um, yeah, not, you know, first is thank you for bearing with us um, and, and listening to our thoughts. Um, and uh, this is, I think, the beginning of conversation that where we do need to dig more deeper into how masculinity as a lens can help us understand how the global politics is shaping right now but not only at the global politics, but also the politics within our own states and nations. Uh, what we know even in Indonesia, but also looking at what is happening in Brazil with Bolsonaro, 
uh, what is happening in India with Modi, you know, uh, what is happening with, uh, you know, other, um, uh, you know, in, in, in Poland, for example, in Europe, with the whole rhetoric that is being created around the term fundamentalism that automatically gets connected with Islam, but, you know, ignoring the fact the same fundamentalism do exist in Christianity, in Hinduism, in Buddhism, and the roots of all of these fundamentalisms is around the same uh, sense of masculinity, sense of power, sense of... So I think we do need to unpack more in order to really meaningfully challenge the global order right now, you know, at all levels. So I would, you know, this will require all of us who work on feminisms, uh, masculinities, women's rights, women's bodily autonomy, and all to come, or feminist peace and environmental justice to really come together with the, because the enemy that we always refer to is the same, which is the patriarchy and the masculine or uh, masculinism as an ideology. Uh, so yeah, I would urge all of us to continue and come together, join hands uh, to provide alternates to what we are observing and the problems we see. Thank you so much, Lasman. Next, uh, last but not least, my for in. Thank you, Farid, and everyone who joining this uh, this discussion this uh, today. Um, I think uh, creating space to discuss about masculinity is, for me, is very important because that is the first step on how to transforming it. So, because uh, uh, before the 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 issue of masculinity is hidden. And then uh, it is important to bring it on the table and discuss it. And then after that, we need to transform it. And then uh, I think the discussion today is really in, uh, give us an, an idea that uh, our global order very much influenced or in other terms shaped by the masculinity norms. and this global order uh, have a big influence in our local order and even in our relationship. So yes, of course, there are a lot of homework to do to transform this very systematic and very uh, a strong uh, system uh, of the masculinity, uh, mas uh, patriarchal masculinity or uh, masculinism or in uh, among the millennial we call it as toxic masculinity so i think that is uh, this is a, a good uh, step to uh, discuss further about this about the, this topic and then uh, transform it uh, and then also finding uh, an alternative way to live in our world thank you Harit. Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate uh, Lasman, Dr. Sitru Haini, and Mas Poim uh, for your very important participation and contribution. Uh, we have, we are in the same boat, you know, while we, we, we agree that masculinity is very important framework to understand, you know, our uh, current politics. Uh, to some extent, especially in the context of Indonesia, we still see uh, people, uh, including in uh, among the feminist group, that rarely talk about this. Especially when we talk about masculinity and its relationship or correlation with the uh, uh, politics. So I think let's uh, let's put in our agenda. We're going to talk, uh, you know, more specifically about Indonesia, maybe. But uh, last month can present any time. You know, you you are very helpful here. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, once again, I really appreciate your contribution also to uh, our uh, interpreters, uh, uh, Mine and uh, Kaka. Thank you so much for helping us. And to the all audience, thank you so much for your participation and contribution. As uh, Mas Woim, Lasman, and uh, Dr. Ruhaini said earlier that this is just beginning. So we need to continue talking about this in more uh, discussion. Uh, let's see, you know, if you, you have any idea about uh, the 
discussion topic, just let me know. We, we can facilitate. Uh, Let's talk is very open uh, forum. Uh, we can facilitate all any discussion, both in English or in uh, Bahasa Indonesia. Once again, thank you so much. Before I close, there are two uh, announcements. Uh, the uh, coming uh, event, uh, we're going to have a talk show in Bahasa Indonesia under the title is Media, Keadilan Gender, and Keragaman Seksual. We are inviting uh, Rosiana Silalahi from Compass TV and then uh, Sonia Helen from uh, Compass Newspaper and then Luviana from Onde.co uh, and then uh, Dr. Binali Stiorini, the researcher on sexuality and gender. And then one more is who else? And Adia Irawati will be the moderator. And the coming Saturday, we're going to have a uh, live on Instagram. We're going to talk about the local uh, model of empowering uh, uh, female transnational domestic workers. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to dig the experience from Lombok, West Nusa Tenggara. So if you have time and interest in the topic, please join us. Uh, once again, thank you so much. I really appreciate. Uh, on behalf of Let's Talk, uh, I would like to last time again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mas Fadil. Thank Take you, Mas Man. Yeah, terima kasih. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mas Man. Thank you so much. Mas Boim. Thank you, Mas. Thank, thank you, Mas. Thank, thank, yeah. thank you so much. Mas Nur. Mas Nur Sabani. Terima kasih. Mbak Julia mana ini? <laughs> Mbak Julia videonya dong. <laughs> I think she's falling asleep. Ya, yeah, Mbak Mbak Nur Sabani. Thank you so much. Dari Mas Man, thank you very Mbak. much. Thank you very much, Mas Man for. Ya, yeah, Mbak Nur, I'm sorry I didn't invite you to talk. Mbak Nur. <laughs> Nur, selamat malam, Mbak Nur. But if you want to talk semua. now, feel free. <laughs> Oke, okay, Mbak Eni, Farid. Terima kasih, Mas Farid. Terima kasih banyak ya. Yuk, sama-sama yuk. Terima kasih. Ya, makasih. Saya tutup ya. Ya, yuk. Pak Wiji, terima kasih. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Mbak Nur. <laughs> makasih, Mbak Nur. <laughs>